nerd alert. Nerd alert. Hi, and welcome to DSLR Nerd. I'm your host, Damien. Tonight we're going to talk about the Audio-Technica Lavalier Microphone. Um, been doing a lot of research on audio lately, and I currently have the Rode NTG2, the Rode M3, the Bern, Bernheiser, Bergen, Fergenheisen, uh, Schmorgus, Schmack, Schmorgen. It was all going so well. The Bayer Dynamic M58 Dynamic Professional Broadcast Microphone. Uh, 58 bucks on eBay, man. Sniper! A Gitzo 5 section boom mic. 66 bucks. Carbon fiber. Now, carbon fiber's got a little more bounce and it doesn't have an internal cable. I'm reading two different books on field audio right now. Um, reading up about boom mics and shotguns and condenser and hypercardioid and lavalier, uh, as well as um, different types of dead cats and wind muffs and um, all manner of different um, shock mounts. I'm reading up on shock mounts. Shock mounts! Sounds pretty sexy though, to say it. Shock mount. Shock mount. By God, shock mount. Uh, Task MDR40 currently, I know, I've got to be run and gun. Uh, so, outdoors I've got an NTG2 from Rode. Uh, for indoor, I've got a Octava 012-1 hypercardioid. Hypercardioid. That's a fun one to say. Hypercardioid. I'm telling you guys, this is not colored on top. I just happen to be this gray on the bottom. And I also have a Rode M3, which I'm just going to play with. A couple of mics I'm going to be doing a review on. And at some point, my um, Juice Link, which I really like. I've come to... I've come to have a liking for this little metal box with the switches underneath. Um, this is the RM333 for uh, people that have a 5D Mark III or a 6... No, a 5D Mark III, pretty much, or higher in the Canon line. Because this does not have headphone monitoring. This does not have headphone monitoring. So you're going to have to get the r Riggy Assist, which is about a little wider, about that wide, much wider. And it's got little levels on it, as well as a uh, headphone out. Uh, so this is a microphone preamp. Um, these run 400 new. You can get them for as low as 200 on eBay, um, even in the high 90s or so. Uh, it's got the three XLRs. They make different versions of these, one with uh, just two XLRs. Uh, but I like the three because you can do basically uh, left and right, so two mics into there, and then you can do a third one that's a decibel lower. Um, so if you don't have that recording capability with your field recorder, it's kind of nice to have that uh, third one as a minus 16 decibel um, reducer or so. So these two end up, when you do that though, your left and right come out one channel and then you've got a second channel that does that because you're just kind of, you know, left and right out. And that's basically all that can do. But the, um, the Task MDR40 is doing four channels, right? So you're doing the left and right XLR and the internal, um, the internal microphones. And then a fourth thing, I think, right? Uh, perhaps a track that's already been recorded? I don't remember. <laughs> I think that, that that's a hard thing to remember about that. Anyway, you can't know everything about all your stuff. You'll never, ever will. So... Uh, this is a very nice thing to have as I'm getting to audio and I'm going to do reviews on the Rhodes and the, um, the Octava that I got. Um, but the first one tonight is, so the, uh, I'll do a full review on the Juice Link. You've probably seen the Juice Link anyway, but um, the Juice Link just adds more uh, oomph to the signal, which helps you keep the hiss down. That's basically what it does. So, uh, some of your microphones come across with work with certain devices and it's just not that hot. And the signal needs to be punchy and hot because uh, the Canon, if you're running into your Canon, the, um, the preamps on the Canon are just kind of 
so-so, so it needs needs boost. Uh, and the preamp's even good when you're using a field recorder, too. Uh, if you went from microphone into the juice link into your field recorder, and then even into your camera, you can actually achieve that. I like it. It's a, it's a hand, definitely handy little device for boosting your power. All right, so the Audio-Technica Lavalier Microphone. Let's unbox this motherfucker. Got a battery, got the little plastic clip, metal clip, got a little windscreen here. This is the microphone, the uh, battery pack, and look, a whole lot of cable. You do want to have these little windscreens on your uh, microphones to keep from pops, saying a big burst of air over top of the microphone. Uh, you don't want that to blow your levels out. Um, Sad fact is there's no battery uh, level indicator on this thing, so people have been talking about uh, pretty much using a fresh battery for every time they go on a job, but that sounds familiar, doesn't it? It could be, could be this thing on there, but at least there's an on and off switch and comes in an off position, which is handy. Or your DSLR. Uh, but I suggest that you get a preamp of some kind uh, in order to boost the signal from the uh, unbalanced microphone uh, into your camera. So the audio guys will tell you that there's unbalanced and balanced cables and the XLR mics running XLR cables into an XLR receiver like a preamp like this and then you can run this into your camera uh, is a much cleaner sound uh, than the mics that have these batteries in them uh, and which you can still run through a preamp uh, but running these mics that have batteries in them into your right into your camera is only going to it's only going to give the certain amount of result. Uh, running it through a preamp is a better way to go. I think running it through a preamp is a, running it through a preamp is a better way to go if you're going into camera. If you're going into field recorder, you got to remember to hit record on the field recorder. Um, you know. Uh, dual audio, I think, is nice. I think, uh, you know, I think for running gun a lot, it's good to have a sound guy, but then you can just throw a, a small shotgun like the Rode NT1 or some of the small Audio Technicas um, or even the Rode Video Mic Pro. Uh, they've got a couple of different um, on camera shock mounted shotgun microphones, Rode does right now. It's kind of confusing because the Rode was. They had the, the Rode Video Mic, which is a big bulky bastard, and then they came out with the Video Mic Pro, which was smaller. Uh, and had just as good a sound, and then they came out with like a kind of a thing in between. Uh, it's on these red sort of um, different kinds of red uh, vibration dampeners. Those Aussies, what are they up to? All right. The nice thing about the, the very nice thing about the Canon M500 is that it's got a mic and headphone jack. So I guess I've got audio going right now. I think it just switched in. Check, check. Checky one, checky two. Only a couple more months of being hunched over down here in this small studio space. We're moving to a house. We're moving to a house in Western New York that will have a large room and a studio for me. I'm gonna lower this down a little bit. Hello. Test one, two, three. So now I've got this Audio Technica microphone, the ATR3350. There's another Audio Technica microphone on the market that is apparently the older version of this lav, but they're still selling it for like $10 more. I'm not sure why. Hopefully a pretty quiet space right now. One of the things I'm learning about audio um, production is to Get those moving blankets and hang them around your studio so that the sound has places to dampen. Um, so big blankets are apparently the preferred means of sort of keeping the echoes down within a room. And that's definitely why you can't use a shotgun microphone within a closed area or like a room because now the Rode shotgun is fine. The Rode VideoMic Pro that I have is doesn't have the um, special little vents on the side of the shot of itself. I don't think it does anyway. I'll have to look at it. 
it stays within its foam all the time. I never look at it. But shotguns have, uh, when I do a re review of the NTG2, I'll show you that uh, the tube of the shotgun microphone has these little vents in the side of it. And they're not called vents. They're some, called something audio fancier than that. But they um, get confused by small, you know, by walls, by hard surfaces and such. So can produce echo in your sound. So for interior work on a boom, I've got the Octava 012 um, with the hypercorded with the hypercortisone <laughs> with a hypercardioid uh, capsule on the end of it. Well, what else do you say about a microphone? It either sounds good or it's, it doesn't. I guess um, people that do microphone reviews generally have shorter um, reviews than on this show because I can yak about stuff and the details for all night long. A boom, 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 boom. Hey, boom, 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 boom. Uh, so I'm going to wrap things up, not because I'm finished with what I'm saying, it's just because I've run out of beer. I'm going to wrap things up, not because I've finished what I've been talking about, it's simply because I've run out of beer. Alright, so I guess I'm going to take my Juicy upstairs. My Juicy and my Lavi. No, that's not handling noise at all. My juicy and my lavy, my juicy, my juicy and my lavy. So here's what, it, this is pretty far. So I wonder if you could sort of hide this on set somewhere. Hide a few of these on set somewhere. That's an interesting prospect, uh, I think, in filmmaking is tuck three or four microphones around the room and kind of see what you got. Nice little laugh. All right, I'm going to remember to turn it off. <laughs>